Welcome to Teen YPWW Lesson 13. I do not own the rights to this music. Today's topic is God's Powerful Acts, a New Testament review. The lesson text is coming out of Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 through 20, John chapter 6, verses 5 through 14, Luke chapter 21, verses 1 through 4, and John chapter 10, verse 13. The memory verse is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20. I will read the King James Version first and then the New International Version. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe, according to the working of his mighty power? The New International Version. And is incomparably great power for us who believe that power is the same as the mighty strength. The key for today's lesson. History matters. The focus for today's lesson, giving God my all. There are several biblical accounts where believers gave all of a resource that they had to the kingdom of God, whether it was money, time, talent, or some other treasure. The Bible ensures that we know that they gave their all. Our lesson today is about three Bible heroes who gave at this level. When you give to the kingdom of God, you will be blessed. If you don't have any money to give, you can give your time, skills, and talents to help someone in need. You can volunteer to help church and community events. Your acts of kindness are an excellent way to give. The Bible speaks expressly of this principle in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, which says, Give and you will receive. Your gifts will return to you in full. Press down, shaken together, to make room for more, running over, and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Your attitude towards giving must be developed. Be happy to give when you can. Be happy when you don't have anything to give. Knowing in the future, God will bless you to be able to give again. God loves a cheerful giver. Today's lesson is a brief summary of three powerful acts of God in the New Testament. The common theme of these stories is giving God my all. The first story is found in John chapter 6 verses 5 through 7. When a young lad gave his lunch, two fish and five loaves of bread to the disciples to help feed others, his lunch was all he had to eat. And he gave it away. Jesus blessed the food and miraculously multiplied it. Everyone there, 5,000 people, ate to their full that day. And there was a substantial amount left over. Our second event is found in Luke chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. It was offering time at the temple in Jerusalem. As the congregants gave Jesus, made an interesting observation and taught a financial spiritual truth. As the rich people gave, they flaunted their large offerings so that everyone could see how much they gave. Then a poor widow gave two very small copper coins. Jesus then declared, This poor widow has put in more than all the others. The rich people gave out of their wealth, but she out of her poverty, and put in all she had to live on. The kingdom financial value of her offering exceeded that of the wealthy givers. Our third event is death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. In order for us to have a relationship with God, we needed reciprocity. Reciprocity for our sinful nature. Without the shedding of blood, there cannot be remission of sins. The pure, righteous, sanctified blood of Jesus Christ paid for our sins. This was a debt that he didn't owe. In John chapter 10, verses 15 through 18, Jesus declared that he volunteered to lay down his life for the sheep. He further went on to say that he had the power to take it up again. The Calvary experience of Jesus Christ is shared in the four Gospels. His selfless act of giving all culminates our lesson today. The whole world benefited from his extreme sacrifice. Generations past, present, and future are blessed because of his shed blood that washes away our sins. There may come a day in your life, teen listeners, when you are challenged by God to give all of a valuable Commodity that you have, all of your food, all of your money, 
When this happens, you will know crystal clear that this is God's will for you at that time. Our Father is omnipotent, omnipresent, loving, and very kind. He will make sure that you know and understand clearly when he challenges you to give on the level of all. The knowledge that God will provide for all of your needs, no matter what, gives you the freedom to share with others without any regrets. Then after your giving, you can rejoice and expect a divine return on the all that you gave. God, for the most part, does not expect you to give your things away all of the time. He wants you to take care of yourself first and be willing to share with others when it is isn't, when it is possible. If God prompts you to give away any of your commodities, you can rest assured that he has a divine replacement plan of that same commodity in your future. The questions for today's lesson. Number one, a cheerful giver gives without being sad. A cheerful giver remains happy even when they have nothing to give. Discuss that with your class. Number two, God gives seeds to the sower. What does this statement mean? And number three, why must giving to God and others be established in life in the lives of believers? The end. God bless you and thank you for joining me today.